Captain! Over here! The workup's in the Cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But, listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I... am a clone. Of a man named Francois Sanon. One-time Fleet Admiral of the UC during the Colony War. Former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated, in Old Earth Latin. A title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military and civilians. And the things he did, well... They're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserved to know, considering how much you've done already. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or, if you've got any last-minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the Cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. I strain from the amount of reading I've got on the horizon if we succeed. The Terramorph project never went anywhere. It couldn't. They are deadly creatures, but they aren't xenoweapons. The cabinet not opening the archives is probably a bigger risk than them handing over the files. That data itself isn't dangerous. Which probably wouldn't be a bad point for us to bring up, should the opportunity arise. Well, thinking about it more, I suspect there'd be value in sharing the fact that the Terramorph project was, well, a failure. There's no need to be afraid of this data being weaponized. Knowing that should calm some of the Cabinet's fears and make it easier for us to dispel any suspicions the other factions might have about our intentions. I mean, we never spent a lot of time together. He was too busy being Fleet Admiral to deal with kids. I was raised by a pair of Guardians instead. Until his defeat during the Colony War, though, he was known as an extremely effective commander. Savvy. Perceptive. That mind opened a lot of doors for him. And for me, too. But Ve Victus, for all his ability, was heartless. Ruthless to a fault. In the end, that's what cost him his life. That's actually a souvenir from my time on Mars. The Red Devils unit I was a part of, they were founded by recruits who'd worked some of Mars' deepest mines. Folks used to adversity. The dust at those depths, it seeps into everything. The human eye included. Where the name Red Devils came from in the first place. 
It became an unwritten rite of passage that anyone wanting to enlist with the Devils had to do a stint in the mines before they could join up. The Devils were always talked about in such revered tones during my training, so as soon as I was old enough, I signed up, and the eyes were my parting gift. Then I guess it's just a matter of... My cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. Captain, congratulations on joining the ranks of the Vanguard. Ah, welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope we'll determine here today. So now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice Archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, Terramorph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask, how many deaths the cabinet requires to act? 50? 50,000? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Essene has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this Terramorph seem at all alarming to you? Just taking her word for it as well, then. Hmm. So it would seem. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, 
Would you grant the request made to open the archives? I'm uncomfortable opening the archives without gathering more information. However, if that's the path forward you prefer, then so be it. I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Well, I am not. I've heard nothing here to convince me that we should do anything but wait. And I will not risk galactic peace on a question of if. Yes, a fair assessment, Chief Diplomat. So then... While the data you two have presented is compelling, I think we can safely say it's insufficient for the level of action you've requested. Perhaps once we... What was that? Attention. Attention. An incident has occurred. Facility lockdown engaged. Incident? Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs. More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Damn it. They're here. Now. There... There must be another explanation. The, the creatures... evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things. But do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. The nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. It's going to take a while to bring them in. Well, then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You two, we can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming, and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there. Trying to get them help, but they slipped their restraints. Thank you for what you did. We didn't... We didn't want to hurt them. The way those people were acting, I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? I... I don't know. They were down at the port, and they just started... screaming. 
We'd tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but... But some of the other officers down there... We couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just... started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Fermonic projection. Some Terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're gonna need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. I'm not suggesting. It's documented behavior. The result of the projection, though, can vary wildly. Some folks just shrug it off. Others hallucinate. And some lose control altogether. They'll lash out at anyone around them. But still, be aware while they're doing it. Those cases, you'll either need to knock them out with EM fire, or free them by killing the Terramorph. I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them. Remaining creatures locked down on the landing pad, barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before. Well, one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I, I can't risk them taking over any more men. Put those things down and do it fast. We will hold them as best we can. be looking for some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. But we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us.
We're not afraid, but we'll stay here and hold the line if that's what you want. You're the experts. Your call. We're on the line. It's over. Thank God. If these things reached the populated areas of the city, we would have had an absolute massacre on our hands. They weren't kidding about you, too. 
It had best put the right people in the right place. Hmm. Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. Nothing's getting to the cabinet. Pardon. Excuse me. Whole building's on lockdown. That's a relief to hear. Thank you, gentlemen. Let your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I believe we have some things we should discuss. Losing anyone in the line of duty is a tragedy. These attacks and loss of life, they can't the happen to again. The, the costs of this... Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, after today's events, the Cabinet has decided to revisit its previous decision. We will be supporting your collection of the Terramorph data from the Archives as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. The Cabinet wants progress, and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of Terramorphs off the embassy doorsteps. The cabinet was unanimous. They want you. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? Uh, 
I'm glad to hear it. Now, we of course won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We're dismissed. We're counting on you. Don't let my people sacrifice me. You've done the UC an incredible service, Captain. Unfortunately, I believe this is only the beginning. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Consider it done. That must make you my vanguard, Captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second in command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also told the President wants us to get you into the Armistice Archives ASAP. So, I've got no time to waste. You know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency, and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both, and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ah, <sighs> the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Report suggests there's a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for intel. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over. But I can't make any promises. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, 
making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. Ambassador Balmore's a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Now hold on a moment. There's no reason to assume we're better than they are, despite their cultural beliefs. They certainly come with a checkered past, but there's an additional wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmore is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. The Varun delegation brought more than a few of their native flora with them when they set up in the embassy. It seems those plants have been allowed to flourish, making it hard for us to verify what's flora and what's ambassador. The embassy is still legally House Varun's sovereign territory, so we're not technically permitted inside. We've snuck in the occasional spy, of course, but the ambassador has proven more evasive than you'd expect for a man of his age. But we're quite sure he hasn't left the city. The man stands out. Then you search the embassy for his biometric key, collect your code piece, and we'll go about notifying his next of kin, if we can ever find them. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. I have no doubt. Now, the embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here, this device should get you all the way down to the embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Ah, oh, she absolutely was. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé. <laughs> now that you mention it, you're probably right. Either way, we logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. Honestly, 
It wasn't so much what Aja and I discovered in our travels. It was the journey that was memorable. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. No, she retired. Living on Porima too now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, <laughs> that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please give me some time. I, 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 I have to go. Maybe we should stop for a moment at the memorial. You know, to pay our respects. Hard to believe it's been two decades since we were at war with the Collective, when it seems like only yesterday. Visitors are only allowed in the lobby of- I'm going to be up front with you. I'm not happy visiting anything related to the Freestar Collective. But you lead, and I'll follow. All that security, and they still can't protect their own spaceport. The UC never fails to disappoint. I just wish I hadn't received the news from an SSNN broadcast. We have a strategic advantage to maintain, Mr. Long. This building is Freestar Sovereign territory. So here, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. We're the law. Uh, excuse me. Are you supposed to be in here? I'm sorry. Do you have an appointment? Uh, 
Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. Tell me I've got that right. Hmm. I was afraid of that. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now, why don't you quit wasting my time, and yours, and go. You're really gonna push this? Alright, I will give you one chance, one, to convince me. Understood. I'm listening. And those lives are in my hands. You're not gonna flatter me into acting against the Free Star Collective's best interest. Responsible governance will not be rushed. Captain, I'm sorry, but my answer is not changing. The UC is just gonna have to find another way. Now, I presume you can see yourself out. is an absolute... Oh, sorry. Oh, what? You're the Vanguard captain, right? You know, I was about to board the Nat to the spaceport when the alarm triggered. Sounds like I got real lucky. And like I've got you to thank for things not being a lot uglier. Well, then you have my earnest thanks. But, but look, they said you were coming here on official business. The ambassador likes to handle all that personally, even if she does have trained diplomats here to help her. And I don't want to get shipped back to Aquila City, so you should probably go speak to her. You want to work with me? I. Why don't we talk somewhere uh, a bit more private? So you want me to work with you, but why now? Why me? No, I, I think that's a pretty safe assumption, and no other city should have to go through what happened here. So then, uh, what would you need from me? Quarters. Huh. Well, that's doable. And you and the UC will be providing me with what for my services? Mm -hmm. 
Wait. I thought you were looking to hire me. I'm not taking a bribe. Really? Uh, okay. Uh, you've got yourself a deal. Okay, so... There's a utility corridor that leads to the Ambassador's Quarters, which you can access through the main conference room. Here. The key. Whatever you do, don't let the guard see you entering or exiting the utility section, or you're gonna be in serious hot water. I'll, uh, I'll keep an ear out for more instructions from the UC. Did I not make myself abundantly clear, Captain? You're not getting access to the Archives. Excuse me? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, uh, no, no. If the Council found out, I'd lose my position. I'd be exiled. I'd be... Look, I believe we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. The issue at hand is one of trust, no? 
So perhaps if I can trust you to keep this little secret between us, then maybe we can find a way to trust the UC with access to the Archives. Good, good. I appreciate you working with me. Just like I'm sure our great powers will. In fact, I think there's an opportunity here. Keep both our factions happy and ensure an air of legitimacy to the whole proceeding. I can only let you get the information on the Terramorphs. Anything else and people will get suspicious. And all research will need to be monitored. Freestar scientific observers making sure everything's being used for the right purposes. But those two items should be enough to allay any suspicions. Good. Good. Okay. Let's go get you your access. Tell me it should only take a moment. And there. Here you go. It's not supposed to be a long process. It is for emergencies, after all. Exactly. It's like, like, when someone insults you. It's a shame House Varun abandoned their embassy. Mm. I bet we could have learned a lot from one another. This isn't what I expected at all. It appears the flora they were using as decor has overgrown the entire embassy.
what I expected at all. Because the flora they were using as decor has overgrown the entire embassy. It'd actually be more fascinating if its branches weren't blocking our way.
Punishment becomes providence. A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the venom tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? <laughs> Tell me, though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, uh, then the embassy was struck with a power surge, and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? <sighs> Is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. 
Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Uh, an archive code. So, the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably, hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the Archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks, there is logic there. But, if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. With little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. We'll do everything we can to make certain that happens. Well, then I shall not fear. Please, follow me. <sighs> Let's hope it still works. Let it be used for good.
see that scientist out in front of Mast, staring at trees. Sounds upset. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad, right? Healing in art is a uh, more exciting than content. Oh, please, take a look.
Oh, please, take a look. Thanks. It's hard work, but... And I can't take all the credit. Gerhardt, my business partner, he does so much of the work behind the scenes. If it weren't for him, I don't know... Thanks for coming in! Okay, that's it. Time to sell some of your junk.
what response? Here on Vanguard business? Howdy. Captain, I just received a couple messages from an operative in the embassy office. I did. Did you actually succeed? With Radcliffe and Balmore. Was he alive? Did they both actually agree? You saved him. You Vanguard really do take that above and beyond thing seriously, don't you? Fine work. And now, I've already arranged everything with the archival monitors. When you get down there, the UC monitor will give you instructions on how to deploy the codes. Follow them to the letter. Here, the UC code piece and an archival access card. The entrance is just on the other side of the plaza across from Mast. Absolute best behavior down there, all right? Sergeant Yumi's looking for reliable people to help the guard. Contact him if you're interested. We'd all appreciate it.
Captain. Surprised to find out we're having visitors as we work. Major Sinan and I were just discussing the merits of your planned interfactional cooperation. I think it's a great idea. Get them invested in the solution. Make it clear we've got nothing to hide. I'm sure they'll be lovely house guests. Now, Captain, if you wouldn't mind transferring the documents to the Major, she and I have been discussing next steps. Time for us to start getting some real answers and figure out if we've been asking the right questions. So whenever you're ready. You're carrying the most comprehensive collection of information on Terramorphs in the known universe. If we can't pry an answer out of there, it likely doesn't exist. Certainly doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but we're not gonna know until Percival and I dig in, so whenever you're ready. Acknowledged and accepted, Captain. So with the data out of the way, we've been discussing where exactly this work's getting done. The Red Devil's headquarters on Mars, back where you found Percival, seemed the natural spot. Already has the equipment, the safety measures. Should even be able to house its own cadre of independent observers. Though it sounded like the deputy had a few more things she needed to discuss with you first. Indeed. The most important of which is getting you your citizenship. Then I guess we'll see you on Mars. Captain, if you'll follow me. All right, Captain. Are you ready to become a citizen of the United Colonies? All right, Captain. Good. This isn't the only item we need to discuss, so I'll give you the short version. Please raise your hand. Captain, through your actions today and in days past, you have earned your place among the United Colonies. Through service, bravery, strength, and upholding of the mutual good. Will you carry and cultivate these values for as long as you remain a citizen? And then, Captain, I'm pleased to welcome you into the United Colonies as a full citizen. Here, your official ID and your citizenship dispensation. We've also let the Aphelion Realty Office out in the plaza know you're approved to purchase property. Now, the other item we needed to discuss. There's a member of the UC who's asked to speak to you, but this person is in a sensitive position. Normally, we wouldn't even consider something like this, but we think this person has information that could prove useful in dealing with the Terramorphs, and they've stated they'll only share it with you. They asked for you by name. So I need your agreement that everything you're about to see is kept in the strictest confidence. You can tell no one. Can you agree to these terms? I'm sorry. I can't share any more without your word. Do I have it? Let's hope it never comes to that. Head to the elevator. You're going to subsection 7. I'll make sure you're cleared for access by the time you get there. 